The transmission of sounds in space is entirely different from how it is on Earth, where sounds are carried to our ears by vibrating air molecules. This is because sounds travel through the vibration of particles, and space is a vacuum, with little or very few particles to vibrate, hence there is no sound. Astronomers and scientists are glad that that's the case, because if it weren't, the sun would roar at 100 decibels, which would be like listening to very loud music daily. NASA has been investigating space for many years and has captured some astonishing noises from various corners of the cosmos. What could cause these odd noises? And what were they trying to tell us about the future? Stay tuned, let's find out. Before we delve deeper, it is essential to note that the particles in the medium through which sound moves vibrate back and forth due to the longitudinal waves it travels. It moves through a medium at the speed of sound, which is different for each substance. Generally, sound moves through gases more slowly, liquids faster, and solids faster. As a result, there are areas of high pressure where particles are squished together in the form of compressions, and regions of low pressure where they are more widely spaced apart. The wavelength of a wave is the distance it takes to complete one cycle, such as the separation between each time it is compressed. NASA's spacecraft has flown across many areas of our solar system capturing some unusual noises that are difficult to explain. Recently, a disturbing audio sample of sound waves pouring out of a supermassive black hole 250 million light years away was published by NASA. The black hole sits in the heart of the Perseus Galaxy Cluster, and its acoustic waves have been transposed up 57 and 58 octaves, such that they are audible to humans. This supermassive black hole at the center of the Perseus Galaxy Cluster, known for its terrifying whales, was discovered by scientists in 2003 to be emitting acoustic waves via the vast quantities of gas around it. To hear the sounds coming from the supermassive black hole in all directions at pitches 144 quadrillions and 288 quadrillion times higher than their original frequency, the sound waves were extracted outwards from the supermassive black hole at the center of the Perseus cluster and played in an anti-clockwise direction from the center. The outcome is unsettling like many space waves captured and converted into audio frequencies. This wouldn't be the first time scientists discovered a strange sound in the cosmos. Let's tell you more. One of the most well-known noises is the whistler, a falling whistle-like sound created by lightning strikes on Earth. The sound, however, does not remain on Earth. It goes into space and bounces off the Earth's magnetic field, producing the unusual whistle-like sound caught by NASA. Heinrich Barkhausen, a German scientist, accidentally recorded the first whistling noises while tapping British phones during World War I. He recorded the strange tones but could not explain them at the time. Low radio frequencies are used by plasma waves. Patterns develop when audible sound waves are transformed, such as the whistler, a fast dropping tone created by lightning discharges. Another is the dawn chorus, short rising frequency tones created by electrons caught in magnetic fields encircling planets that sounds like bird tweeting. The Whistler is rumored to be one of the several space noises that inspired Terry Riley's piece, Sun Rings, which was premiered by the Kronos Quartet at the Barbican Center in London on March 22, 2003, with further performances in seven American cities to follow in the ensuing months. The piece commissioned by NASA's arts program is based on Don Gurnett's space recordings, an astrophysicist at Iowa Space University whose plasma wave sensors have been aboard numerous spacecraft over the last 40 years. Scientists have generated music from Saturn's moons and rings, transforming their rhythmic orbits into musical octaves. The musical note sound was captured by NASA's Cassini probe while it orbited Saturn. This was to commemorate the grand finale of NASA's Cassini mission. Since it arrived in 2004, the Cassini spacecraft has circled Saturn and gathered data. According to researchers, after millennia of marveling at Saturn and its ring's magnificence, we can finally listen to them. Orbital resonances, which occur when two objects execute different numbers of complete orbits simultaneously, causing them to revert to their starting configuration, allow for the music conversion. The rhythmic gravitational pulls between them keep them bound in a tight repeating pattern that can be immediately turned into musical harmony. The orbits of Saturn's moons and the orbits of the trillions of tiny particles that make up the ring system both contribute to the musical notes and rhythms that are heard. The researchers enhanced Saturn's six biggest inner moons, 
regular orbital frequencies by 27 octaves to arrive at musical notes for the first piece, which tracks Cassini's last descent. Titan, Saturn's moon, provided the Cassini probe with the previous push that sent it hurtling into its doom in Saturn's core. The song accompanies Cassini's last journey through the ring system by transforming the orbital frequencies of the rings, which are continually growing, into a dramatic rising pitch. The loudness of the tone rises and falls in time with the observed bright and dark bands of the rings. What you hear are the real moon frequencies moved into the human hearing range, Russo said. The scientists then played the generated notes every time a moon completed an orbit using a state-of-the-art computational simulation of Tamayo's lunar system. Another weird sound is the roar, a low-frequency sound that NASA recorded from the Voyager 1 spacecraft as it went through our solar system's furthest reaches. It was discovered in 2006 when scientists started searching for distant signals in the cosmos using complicated equipment attached to a massive balloon flown into orbit. The gadget could pick up radio waves from faraway stars, but what came through that year was incredible. The device picked up a signal that was six times stronger than cosmologists had predicted, as it listened from a height of around 23 miles. The enormous signal caused much consternation, since it was too loud to be early stars. It was significantly more significant than distant galaxies' projected total radio emission. Yet even now, experts are unsure of what's causing it. Scientists think that the sound is produced by the interplay of the sun's magnetic field with the interstellar medium. They also believe that it may impede attempts to find signals from the earliest stars produced after the Great Bang. The arcade, which NASA constructed to explore the cosmic microwave background spectrum at lower frequencies, was the device that picked up the enigmatic roaring signal. The mission's scientific aims were to locate heat from the first generation of stars, look for particle physics leftovers from the Big Bang, and study the development of the earlier stars and galaxies, when Arcade hovered far above Earth's atmosphere free of influence from our planet. These objectives were met by screening 7% of the night sky for radio signals, since distant light loses energies with distance and transforms into radio waves. Since then, scientists have tried to figure out where the radiation comes from, while also attempting to define the signal's characteristics. The latter became clear relatively fast. Al Kogut, who led the arcade team at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, said, It's a diffuse signal coming from all directions, so it's not created by any one specific item. The signal also contains a frequency spectrum, or color, resembling radio emissions from our Milky Way galaxy. The signal is referred to as radio synchrotron background by scientists because it is an emission from several discrete sources that blends into a diffuse light. Nevertheless, since the space roar is created by synchrotron radiation, a form of emission from high-energy charged particles in magnetic fields, and because every source has the same distinctive spectrum, locating the source of this powerful signal is challenging. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration researchers searching for underwater volcanic activity in the Southern Pacific recorded a weird and thunderous sound in 1997. They recorded multiple instances of the noise unlike anything they had previously heard, using hydrophones or underwater microphones that were more than 3,219 kilometers apart across the Pacific. Not only was the sound loud, but it also had a distinct feature that became known as the bloop. No one knows if the bloop was caused by ship engines, covert undersea military operations, whales, giant squids, or an undiscovered marine creature. What could the cause of this sound be? Any ideas? Share your thoughts in the comments section. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.